Hi, it's me, Jazzy. I'm back with another tech-related video, and today I'm taking a look at one of my favourite things, a piece of Farnell gear. It's a Sine Square Oscillator, model LFP1. It's a rather pretty little thing, isn't it? I do like the look of this Farnell gear. Now, this is another one of my eBay purchases. It looks like it's been worked on before because it has BNCs down here and here where you'd normally find banana sockets. So it looks like some work's been done on it already, but I don't know what else has been done on it. It is apparently in working condition. Now, the other thing I know on this one is a rather short cable length, which is gonna cause me problems because it's nowhere near the plug so i'm gonna have to put a longer cable on this but apart from that i'm hoping it's all good inside apparently it's in working order so it might just need a good coat of looking at and put it on the scope see what we can get out of it but i want to check it out first before we put any power through it see what the caps are like and see what work if any has already been done inside so let's get this over on the bench and get the lid off right let's have a look at this little sign square oscillator it looks in lovely condition it's got its little stand at the bottom there it looks really nice the geared frequency control feels really nice as it should be i love how that is that's so cool the fact that it's geared like that and it doesn't it stays exactly where you put it as well it doesn't like move back or anything it just stays where you want it it all seems to be in really nice condition on off there you've got your ranges square wave or sign you find amplitude feels okay and you can see these have been changed by the previous owner or a previous owner because they would normally be banana plugs there. It looks really, really nice. It looks like it's been really well looked after this. Again, really nice condition. Had a safety test. Can't quite see the date on there. I mean, even on the bottom, like, considering this must have been, what, early 80s perhaps? Late 70s, early 80s? I can't wait to have a look inside. One thing I am going to do is change this mains cable though, because it's really short. Now, I believe we just need to undo these four screws and we should be able to get inside. Really handy that they give you instructions on the back of the case. Look, to remove covers, slacken four screws, marked circle, and pull rear panel backwards by approximately 10 mil. Right, so all I have to do is slacken these. I don't have to take them right out then. I'm intrigued to see inside if the capacitors have been replaced because these would have had Phillips caps in them. So you only need to pull that back a little bit and then this lifts up. No, there's still Phillips capacitors in there. <laughs> yeah, there they are. Little rotters, okay. Now, if we don't get a nice stable sine wave when I test this, highly likely that these are gonna need to be replaced. But look at this absolutely beautiful feels really nice really nice and smooth a lovely bit of engineering that this is the joy of taking these pieces of equipment apart when you get to see the inner workings and how precise this is absolutely wonderful to look at and wonderful to use so i'm just going to quickly check the caps i just want a general idea of condition and yeah i know Testing them in circuit is not always ideal, but I just want a quick snapshot of what these are like. These are four wire Kelvin probes that I made up for my little M162. I won't show you testing all the caps, but we know it's highly likely that these are not going to be perfect. My plan is just to check that there's nothing truly awful that's going to stop me powering it up. I just want to test the unit really and see what the signal output is like. With the likely outcome, I'm probably going to replace all the caps at some point. There's a few more down here on the power supply board as well, so we're going to need to take the back panel off and check these. So now I need to completely remove the four long screws on the back panel so we can get at the power supply board and then I can just pull that off right there we go now we've got a 
beautiful view of the power supply board and more blue Phillips capacitors. I'm also going to replace this really short mains cable as well. I think I'm going to need to remove the bottom so I can get in there. Oh, okay, that's very easy. <laughs> Literally just touched it. Okay, that comes off the same as the top one. Don't you love it when things are easy like this? Wow, that is beautiful. Look, you can see right the way through now. That little glass STC. And we've got two transformers in here. Got a bit of shielding there over the high voltage areas. It's always good. And it looks like it's going to be pretty simple to replace the cable. That's always good. Love it when things are simple. So I'm just going to quickly check the capacitors in the power supply. Again, I won't show you all of the checking, but I just want to get a ballpark idea of the condition of these. At this stage, I'm just evaluating the unit. I just want to make sure it works and I'm happy with it before I spend out the money on capacitors. So if this works as well as it should, then I'll splurge out and replace the lot. Because I want this Farnell to have a long and happy life. It's a lovely little bit of kit. Maybe I need to get sponsored by a capacitor manufacturer. <laughs> These are all reading a little bit on the low side. It's not surprising. They're, they're getting on a bit. They're not going to be perfect. We know what these blue Phillips caps are like. If I can get this to power up and get a signal out of it, that'll give me confidence in the unit that I'll go ahead and spend some money on it. Okay, well, let's sort this power cable out first. So, got our live. It's just soldered to the back of the fuse holder there. That's pretty simple. Neutral just goes into this terminal block here. So, we'll see if we can get that screw. Yeah, screw terminal, nice and easy. And the earth's just soldered onto this tab here. Okay, so first thing I'll do then, let's get the neutral out. I'm going to just temporarily put that back in there because that's one less thing for me to forget so i think what i'm actually going to do to make life easier for myself because i'm probably not going to reuse this cable is i'm just going to cut this so cut it there remove that little cover cut that earth and i can just pull this out can't i all right, a little bit fiddly, getting that strain relief out. There we go. Now I'm going to be replacing it with one of these molded safety jobbies. It's a nice long rubberized cable. It will be long enough to actually reach the socket, which is fantastic. All right, that just needs to feed through here. Right, so what we need to do is to remove what's left of these wires in here. So let's remove this out of the way for a minute and get the soldering iron out. Right, I'm just going to use this one because it heats up quick. Great, now if I can do this without burning myself, it'd be even better. Also, don't forget this little cover's got to go back on. So that's back on. Now we just got to get this earth. All right, now it's just this to go back in the screw terminal. Okay, I think we're good. We just need the strain relief now. Okay, let's get the bottom panel back on. Top back on. That's it. There we go. Right, okay. This one is not a piece of test equipment that I'm going to use every day. This is like a Sunday driver one, one for my little collection. So as long as I can get it up and running, I'll be happy enough for now. So we'll power it up gently on the Variax, see if we can reform the caps, because I don't really want to have to spend a lot of money on this one if I don't have to at the moment. The question is more, does it work? And if it does, how well does it work? So good old Variac time. Yeah, I've had this one for 
quite some time and it does a sterling job okay let's start off nice and low mains is on okay I'll give it a little bit I'll wait a few minutes and then I'll gradually increase it give it the best possible chance I mean how would you like it if you'd had a good long sleep and somebody rudely awakened you you like to be woken up gradually I always like to think that maybe capacitors are the same they've had a long lay in let's wake them up gently right we're at 60 volts now and we've got a little bit of a glow from the light that's a good sign almost there okay so it's been running on 220 volts for a little while now so let's turn off and that off so I'm happy enough with that I've done that over a period of time gradually so move this out of the way now I'm going to plug it in directly power up okay looking good now we want to check if we get a signal okay let's see what we get okay so i've just moved the farnell up on top of my solartron meter here just so you can see the oscillator and the scope at the same time it's a really nice clean sine wave and it's really stable and the geared frequency control is a joy to use it feels really nice very precise let's have a look at the square wave not quite as square as i would like on the 1k there's a little bit of glitch in there i think i'm going to have to replace the capacitors ultimately but i will say considering all that it's still doing a pretty good job so now i'm happy that the farnell is working it's up and running it's a nice clean sine wave I reckon it's worth spending a little bit of time and money on this as it is such a beautiful thing and I love the BNC's on the front I think it looks really cool with the BNC's on the front there's a bit of a glitch on some of the ranges but it's a really nice stable sine wave so yeah I reckon I'll treat this Farnell then now I'm happy it's up and running what a lovely little bit of test gear well, I'm quite taken with the little Farnell LFP1. I think it deserves to have all its caps replaced. Initially, I wasn't too keen on spending a lot of money ordering a whole bunch of capacitors for this little oscillator, but having seen that it functions nicely, I think it's definitely worth doing. So I think that's the way to go. I better make myself a list of what I need and get them ordered up. So I'll do a follow-up video at some point once I've got the capacitors. We'll pop those in and then we'll stick it back on the scope and have a look at the sine and square waves and see the improvement. I think it's well worth doing. The unit's in really good condition. It's really wonderfully engineered inside. I've loved taking a look at the insides of this little Farnell. So I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at the Farnell LFP1. I'll do a follow-up video changing the caps at some point in the near future. As always, massive thanks to everyone for watching, sharing, and subscribing. If you'd like to hit the subscribe button, it's always massively appreciated. I'll be back soon with some more tech-related videos. But in the meantime, take care. I'll see you on the next one.